Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. In this video, I will talk about the latest challenge by Maven Analytics. This challenge is all about creating the top level KPI dashboard for the executors of Northwind traders so that they can quickly understand the data and generate the insights, right? So you have to create step-by-step -step final dashboard that they can understand and refer so that they can make some conclusions. Right. So this challenge, there are various tables. It can be divided into fact tables. It can be divided into dimension tables. Right. So I will explain you how to bifurcate that, how to create the data model, then how to clean them. And finally, how to create the data visualization. All right. So let's get started. All right, guys. So now coming back to the most important part, what are the Power BI project steps that we are going to follow? to conclude with our Northwind Traders case study, right? So step one would be knowing the objective. This is one of the most important part. You must be knowing what should be the outcome. What is the outcome expected from your executives or MD or your bosses, right? Accordingly, you will prepare the KPIs. Accordingly, you will prepare the visualizations, right? So it is very important to know the objective so that you can pull all your resources towards that particular outcome, right? Second is understanding the data set. So now there are various multiple tables coming from different data sources or maybe from one data source only, but there would be multiple tables, how you're connecting them, right? What are the relationships? Are they one to many, many to many, many to one, one to one. So those things are there. Then is it cross filter? or what is the cardinality so we have to understand each and everything about it what are the data types of each column and do we need any other column do we need to create or we need to merge or join the tables right so we have to understand that then we have to classify them into facts and dimension tables so you know dimension tables are like masters so you have date master with you you have product master with you you have location master with you right so those are the dimension tables uh, and then fact tables are like transaction tables where we have sales data maybe on the basis of order date right so generally dimension tables are smaller than the fact tables then we will clean the data if that is needed that can be done on power query right and then finally, this is the outcome data visualization, right? So these are the five steps that we are going to follow to complete this particular project. So knowing the objective, that is number one. Second is understanding the data. Third is classifying them into the fact and dimension tables. Fourth, cleaning the data. Once the data is cleaned, then we will do all our data visualization. All right. So now let's get started with the objective all right so this is the objective that is given on the maven analytics website so the challenge objective let's see what it is written for the maven northwind challenge you will be working as a bi developer for northwind traders a global import and export company so it is an import and export company that specializes in supplying high quality gourmet food products such uh, to restaurants, cafes, and specialty food retailers all across the world, right? As part of your role, you have been tasked with building a top level KPI dashboard for the executive team. So this is very important words, top level KPI dashboard. What is the full form of KPI? Can you just comment below if you know what is the full form of KPI? So its purpose should be to allow them to quickly understand the company's performance in key areas, including sales trends, product performance, key customers and shipping costs. So ultimately, these are the four important matrices or areas you can say where we have to visualize and showcase what exactly is the outcome. So the dashboard should be built to evolve and accommodate new data over time. So it should not be static, for example, when you create a dashboard, it is on one particular date, right? But here we want dynamic. So you should have date filters. You should have other filters as well. So the executive, if you want to see for one particular date or he wants to filter, slice something, he can do that. So it is totally dynamic, right? 
so uh, this is important second is it is encouraged by manager to have insights and recommendation right readily available to share with the vps so it is very important once you prepare the dashboard have the key insights out of that particular dashboard so that the recommendations are readily available for the senior management all right so this is the objective now let's see what is the data set looking like so step one was understanding the objective that is done step two is understanding the data set all right so now you can see here um, these are my tables which are given with the data set categories then product order details shippers orders customers employees so you can see there are total seven tables given with the case study right so you can see categories is my master category where i can have category id category name description what is the freight by cost so you can see this is my one to many with my another product master right so you can see here category id is connected with category id of the product table right so this is one to many now this product table is connected with order details table one to many relationship on the basis of product id right now if you see here customer table this is also a master table where all the details of my customer is available what is the customer name contact name contact title where is he residing which country then what is the id and city right so you can connect this with my order table through customer id key right similarly for employees you can connect employee table with the order table on the basis of employee id key right so this is how you can connect these tables now if we talk about shippers master this is the master where i am having three shipments three companies which are shipping my goods right so this is one to many on the basis of shipper id right so i have shipper id over here and ultimately orders table is connected with my order detail right so, so this is very important you can see orders table is important because i have the dates order date in order table right and quantity is in order underscore details table so this is also very important ultimately the sales trends if you have to understand so i will get from this table so ultimately the overall data modeling here you can see how the data is coming from which table to which table it is very important now we can use shippers as a filter we can use category as a filter from here product filter from here customer filter from here employee filter from here and use all the transaction data from here so it is very good robust model now we are on power bi desktop you can see there are four basic objectives of my kpi dashboard that we have to build today right so one is sales trends second is product performance third is key customers and fourth is shipping cost right so we will be addressing all these objectives today now first of all we have to understand the data set so i have already injected all the tables that is categories customers employees then order details orders products and shipment so if you have to import the data how you will do that so these are all csv files which are comma separated values go to get data click on text csv and then you can select any of your table right now let's see if you want to understand how to map these tables so for that you will go to model view so i have already created the relationships so if you see over here my dim date so this dim date if i go back again and see dim date this is my dimension date which is my master date table so if you want to understand how i have created this you can watch my previous video where i have explained date table in depth how to create these date tables and how to dynamically use these using variables and then returning the multiple columns so you can refer that video i'll share the link with you as well now this is my date master i have to connect this with my order table with order date as my column so if you hover 
to this relationship this is my solid line one to many that means it is active and the relationship is between date and order date right so now going to my categories categories and products these are all connected to order underscore details table right so this is connected through product id as my primary key right so now if we see shippers where i'm seeing three ship uh, shipments company right so this is connected with order table with one to many relationship right all the solid lines denote that these are my active relations right now employee table and customer table these are also my masters right and these are connected to order table right through employee id and customer id respectively all right so this is all about my data modeling and you can create star schema or you can create snowflake schema these are the two most important schemas you can say or modeling that is done in microsoft power bi right now if we go back to my date tables categories right you can see there are eight categories uh, one is beverage then condiments confections dairy grains and cereals meat and poultry produce and seafood right now if we go to customers table i have customer id company name contact name contact title city and country so you know the customers where are they from and how many are they right so we have customers then if we talk about employees we have total eight employees or rather nine employees i guess yes so we have nine employees out of them three are managers one is steven who is sales manager then laura who is sales manager and andrew fuller who is vice president sales so he is head of each and every one right so you can see he is not reporting to anyone this is null right you can see other two salesmen steven and laura are reporting to andrew fuller who is my vp sales so you must be wondering how this column is coming up over here so the point is i have created a self join so that i can get the reporting manager for each of them so how we have created i can show you that as well i'll go to editor this is power query editor all right so now if you see over here in applied steps if i click on the settings here you can see employee table is doing self join again with the own table on the basis of this report report to and employee id and on this basis i am fetching this employee name right so this is how i am getting the new column so let me just go back right now understanding the order table first of all we'll see order underscore details so i have order id product id unit price quantity and discount so ultimately from this table i am getting the unit price i am getting the quantity sold i am getting the discount provided and in order table we are having order id customer id employee id order date this is very important order date then required date ship date so order was done on 4th of july right and shipped on 16th of july so you can get the difference so if you want to get the difference you can just subtract this date from order date here you can see the shipment is done in 12 days so you can get the average shipment days as well as a kpi so you will get to know how many days are being taken uh, in uh, shipping the products or goods right so you can get the average for each and every company there are three shipping companies right so you can see for example in shipping company a it is taking on an average 10 days b is taking 15 days c is taking let's say 12 days so you can see ship, shipping company a is the most uh, you know uh, most useful or good company because it is taking less time to ship any particular good then we have shipper id and freight this is my freight charges so what the amount the cost that it incurs while shipping any good right this is my product table here i am having product name 
the, for example chai the quantity per unit 10 boxes multiplied by 20 bags that means so in 18 rupees or 18 dollars you can say i am getting 10 boxes in each box i am having 20 bags right and category id is also there and there is one column as discontinued if it is zero that means it is not discontinued it is still uh, there with the company if it is one that means it's not present in the company now it is discontinued maybe it is not profitable product or maybe it is not available uh, to be produced so it can there can be various reasons for it right so these are some of the products which are discontinued which won't be available now right so you have understood the data now you have to visualize in your mind how you are going to use this data to create the dashboards as desired right for example first let's see how to create sales trends so if i go to sales dashboard Right, so this is incomplete so the purpose is not to show the beautiful dashboards over here the purpose is to show what are the steps how to approach any case study right so first is sales trends so you have to understand how my sales is progressing month on month so here you can see month on month i have created the bar chart you can sort them on the basis of month right and then you will see how the sales is progressing and then you can filter out any particular year right then you can have data cards because ultimately we have to create kpi dashboard right so kpi is key performing index right so uh, total quantity then uh, you can change over here as ytd quantity i have created ytd as well so here ytd and total would be same then let me add last year let's say total ytd last year what else we can add we can add discount would be last year I don't know why it, it didn't come last time anyway yeah so you can see for 2014 I'm getting these values right so uh, so you must be wondering my total quantity and YTD is same so let's say if I filter out particular month let's say I want to see for December now you will see the difference so total quantity is for the selected period so i have selected december 2014 so the data for total quantity would be only for december whereas ytd sale will give me the total sales from the first month till the selected month right now i can have one more matrix for example let me just add one more matrix uh, let's say i want to create the sales trend employee wise so i will filter according to my employees so employee name right so what is my total quantity then ytd then last year ytd Right, so this is how you can create now you must be wondering why i'm not getting ytd sales or last year ytd sales because there is no filter provided let me just add a filter of year now let's select 2014 
Now you would, would be seeing for 2014, my sales is 25,489. YTD is same. If I filter out particular month, then these two values will be different. And last year quantity is 9,581. This is for 2013, right? So you can see the difference. So this is how you can understand the growth versus last year. So ultimately you want to see the trend, right? So you can have this line chart for total sales versus last year. So I can have total sales. Okay, total quantity versus YT. Okay, last year. on the basis of month. Okay, let's take a year month name. Right, so you can see this blue line, I can see the trend. So if you sort this on the basis of month, you will see the trend. And then this is my last year. All right. Now coming to the next part, if I go to the objectives, you will see the second is understanding the product. So if you want to analyze the product, I can dedicate one page to it because there are so many things. So you have product, you have category, you have pricing for those product, then understanding how the pricing will impact the product performance. So there are so many KPIs that you can track. You can have data cards, you can have bar charts for each product. You can have top five SKUs, which are giving you 80% of your revenue, for example. Then you can have top five, top 10, top 20 SKUs, day to day basis on month to month basis. So there are so many KPIs that you can create in product performance. So now let's see, uh, first of all, I'll just create a duplicate of sales dashboard so that I don't have to create the filters again and again. Right, so, oops, I don't know why it's taking so long. All right, so now, let me just delete this. Let's delete this as well. Let's delete everything over here. So uh, the purpose of this video is not to give you the beautiful dashboard. Uh, the purpose of this video is to tell you how to approach any particular project related to Power BI. So once you have the objective, how to approach, what kind of KPIs you can use, what kind of visuals you can use for what kind of problems. So that is the objective of this particular video. So let's just have a simple table now, right? First I will add category. Category is the higher level, right? So let me just change it to metrics. Now, Let's add the product under the category, right? So you can see over here, if I expand beverages, you'll see all the products coming under beverages, right? Now you can add unit price. Right, so you don't need to create some, uh, I mean, uh, you have to see, for example, chai is rupees 18, which is coming correct. Right? Let's add the unit price from here as well. Let's add the quantity per unit from here. Okay, so it has been shifted into quantity in column. So I did, I will uh, 
change it to my values all right so you can see over here chai comes in 10 boxes and into 20 bags so that means 200 bags are there in one chai which is costing you 18 dollars right so now you have these kind of things you can remove any column which you feel is not relevant now you will add total quantity this is these are the most important kpis which i'm adding <laughs> later on right so where is my total quantity anyway so i'll add it once again then ytd so basically what you have to do is you have total quantity here add ytd add last year ytd add percentage achievement if you have targets then right percentage growth versus last year so this is how you are providing the performance right in metrics format second format is having these clustered bar chart here just add the product and add the quantity and you will get the beautiful clustered bar chart. Right? from here straight away you can say my manjimum dried apples is the net you can add the data labels from here click on yeah so this is how you can get and if you want to filter out for top n you can filter out from filter panel or you can create a dax for it where you can input uh, top 5 top 10 top 20 top 30 so i will be covering those kind of concepts in my upcoming courses so if you want to understand the DAX end-to-end -end, understand the data modeling then you can look forward to those kind of courses from my side right so this is one thing right then uh, if we talk about product wise you can analyze the pricing for example you can create price groups for example the minimum pricing is uh, let's just do it right where is the pricing yeah unit pricing right so here if you sort this or you, you already have 2.5 is the lowest right and 263.5 is the highest so now you can create buckets like 0 to 50 51 to 100 101 to 150 151 to 200 and 200 plus for example this is not mandatory so it is dependent on the business right so it will change from business to business so let's say if we take these five categories so you will analyze for example in 0 to 50 rupees how many quantities were sold from 51 to 100 how many quantities were sold from this type of analysis you can see like for example 51 to 100 is the most relevant pricing category which the users or customers are purchasing right and then you can understand the product pricing and then after that you can analyze location wise product for example this product manjipur dried apples is top selling worldwide right for example if i filter out paris so which one is the highest uh, contributor in terms of product this might not be the case right so it's not like manjipur uh, dried apples is number one in all the countries no this is worldwide number one for example in australia it can be let's say this product right so it depends so uh, if you filter out if you use the filter map and create those logics you can understand which particular product is relevant in which location so these are some ideas of how you can approach all right guys so now let's discuss about key customers so if you talk about key key means very important which are very important for our business right so key customers means like maybe top 5 or top 10 maybe top 20 depending on the business and the size of the business right so it is very important to understand which are my top 5 or top 10 and maybe top n customers right so uh, that will give me the insights because generally my top n customers will provide 80 percent of my sales right so if you have heard about Pareto rule so this goes with this concept as well 
right so if we go to uh, sales dashboard duplicate sales dashboard right so let's see how we can work on customer analysis right so first of all very important is if we can do customer clustering right so if we have 100 customers right and uh, we have the total quantity that they purchase month on month right on that basis we can create five clusters for example one customer cluster cluster a who purchases somewhere around from 0 to 500 quantity right second cluster would be 501 to 1000 third would be 1001 to 5000 fourth would be 5001 to 10000 and fifth would be 10000 plus this is one example depending on the business it can vary as a group clustering right so once you create these clusters and then see how much sales which cluster is contributing right and then analyze which cluster is high performer for you right so this is one approach second is we can directly see cluster uh, customer wise what is my total quantity sold then ytd last year ytd then percentage growth you can have that kind of metrics table the way we created for product right so that is second third would be creating this kind of uh, visual again cluster bar chart where we have all the customer names and then what is the total quantity for them and then you can have a sub product as my category so that you can see for which customer which category is been sold for example let's say in this particular chart in metrics i add customer i will add customer above my category and now i will expand this so now you will see the unit price is same for all because this is not bifurcated on the basis of distributor so you can't say for around the horn this company uh, my unit price is 10 or 20 so it will say, stay the same so the total that is 2222 it is showing over there so this will be irrelevant so i have to remove this right so now you will see after the removal it is taking time to remove so once this is removed you will see for each customer i have total quantity if i expand the customer you will see all the categories that that particular customer is selling so this around the horn is selling only three categories out of eight categories so it is selling dairy grains and seafood for example burglands this customer is selling only seafood right so you can see that right so you can create another chart to visualize which customers are selling what you can create a map also for example this customer is selling dairy with grains and seafood so uh, maybe he can sell this so this comes under consulting so if you want to consult you will see the data and analyze and share the, those insights with your stakeholder right so this is how you can do customer analysis right so in customer table you can see there is contact name contact title country so you can visualize on the basis of country as well the way we did in sales dashboard right you can add all those customers or you can say company name in this map to visualize properly right so if i go to focus mode So I will have the map and then I will have have all the sales coming from different different places right so majorly this data is for Europe South America and North America right so finally the last objective of this particular case study I think it is related to shipping cost yeah so fourth is shipping cost so how to calculate that so as i told you when i was discussing about data sets so if i go to order underscore details all right oh my bad it is in orders i guess 
yes so now you have order date you have shipped date you have freight right you have shipper id through shipper id you can get the shipper name right so from shipper id if you go here there are only three shipper ids one two three speedy express united package and federal shipping right so if i go back for each shipper id you can map and get the shipper name right so for each shipper name you can get what is my average shipping date uh, shipping uh, days right so for first record i can see it is 12 days for second record it is 5 days for third it is 4 days for fifth it is or for fourth it is 7 days for fifth it is 2 days so accordingly you have number of days for each record accordingly you can create the average for each and every shipper right so this is one of the metric second would be on total level what is my shipping days third would be how much freight i am paying for each and every shipper so i can understand that overall my average is let's say 12 dollars uh, as a freight but my shipper id 3 is charging on an average 14 shipper id 1 and 2 are charging roughly around 10 and 11 so i can see that shipper id 3 is expensive it is charging me 14 which is higher than the shipper id 1 and 2 charges right so you can have that kind of insight that shipper id 3 is expensive and if you feel shipper id 1 and 2 are not compensating any i mean they are doing fairly a good job their shipping days is also in line with shipper id 3 then shipper id 1 and 2 are clear winners because their shipping days are less their charges are less but if you want your shipment to be faster and ship shipper id 3 is doing that then the cost might not be relevant to you so it depends on the situation so you can have those kind of insights in your dashboard all right so majorly in shipping cost you will have freight right so accordingly you can calculate uh, what is the percentage of freight over the uh, sales that is happening so you can uh, have a dax like freight divided by total quantity i think i have created this over here let me just check no not in this uh, not in this pbx but i was wor working on this so i created a dax so what you have to do is total uh, so you have to write divide uh, calculate sum of freight a comma then sum of uh, the total cost so you can get the percentage freight versus the total uh, quantity being uh transported right so this is how you have to build kpi dashboards so you have to cover these four parameters sales product key customers and shipping cost so once you're done with these four important areas and you are having that intriguing and interactive dashboard then definitely you have a chance to win this challenge right so all the best guys so if you are aiming for this let me know share your dashboards with me on linkedin or uh on youtube and then i can review that i can comment i can interact with you and uh, give you suggestions uh, and that will be really helpful for everyone so i hope uh, this video was useful to you guys i was uh, more into uh, explaining how to approach case study rather than building my own dashboard because i know uh, my existing dashboards are already there if you want to understand end to end how dashboard is prepared i can share the links uh you can refer them but if you want to understand the logic this video was really helpful i guess this uh, you have to tell me and uh, all right guys thanks a lot for watching this video if you want uh, to understand anything related to power bi or anything related to data analytics as whole uh, do let me know you can comment below you can mail me you can connect with me on linkedin uh whatever you can connect me on instagram as well so i will be happy to report Thanks a lot for watching this video. Thank you.